I think there's this, this inherent guilt factor with a lot of people to spend over $20 a, a bottle on a wine. I know my parents have it. <laughs> my parents are the best. But there's a lot of people, a lot of family, a lot of friends I know, they have this guilt factor associated with a bottle of wine that's over $20, let's say. More often than not, those wines are handcrafted, painstakingly handcrafted, and there's a lot of hands that touch that wine. And so get the guilt out of your system because there are a lot of people who have a job because of you. Well, the profession's a reason. I mean, first you've got the, the guy who's got to prepare the soil, the guy who's got to study the soil, the guy who's got to say, your soil's good for Cabernet, the people that farm it every day. Then you go to the harvesters, the people that pick the grapes. Then it comes into the winery. You have to have somebody who's there at the sorting table to make sure that nothing, uh, what they call MOG, material other than grapes, is getting into the wine. You have the, the guardians who usher the grapes and the, the juice into the winemaking process. The guy who made the barrel. If you go into a cooperage, there are about 15 different roles just in the cooperage alone. The guy who's in charge of making sure that the wood is seasoned properly. Then the guy who's in charge of making sure that the barrels are sanded. And then the guy who is there to make sure that the rungs are all there and the barrel is sounded and tied right down to the guy who runs the hose in it to make sure it's, it's tested well. When it gets to the winery, okay, now you have to maintain those barrels and that takes a whole team of people. And then who has to know when it's time for the wine to come out of the barrel, when it's time to go in the bottle, who's designed the label, who's designed the bottle, who's going to make sure that the corks are sound and safe and, and, and going to be secure. Um, what about the capsules? Who's going to put it in the boxes? Who's going to be involved in driving it to the port, taking that ship across the ocean? And who's going to be involved in getting the container to the warehouse? And you've got three tiers of, of, of sales element involved. What about the, the guy, the, the sommelier, who's got to take inventory? So up until the time the cork is pulled, you've got, I would say, hundreds of hands that have been involved in this process. labor some things cost money but then there's this other thing that i'm putting my heart and soul into this thing i'm making an art a form of art how much is that worth how much is art worth a lot of wine is a luxury product so when you get to that real top of the pyramid you're paying for how many other people want to spend that huge amount of money for that wine i'll give you an example uh, drc made wine has made one for many many years They've always used new oak. They've had the same vineyards, uh, but the price of the wine is always uh, higher. Uh, every year they increase, almost every year, and people buy it. And that's, the wine is amazing. Wine is great. You know, every year they produce at a very, very high level. So that doesn't mean that, you know, perhaps the cost of good is going up. It's just demand and supply. This is considered pound for pound the most expensive wine in the world. Um, it's not uncommon for a bottle of DRC, depending on which vineyard it is, depending on the vintage, to open up current release five to ten thousand dollars a bottle. It's just crazy stuff. I think if you look at each individual grape, depending on where you are, it could be up to five dollars a grape if you break it down to the grape. It's crazy. since uh, 1974 has been the proprietor of Domaine de la Romani Conti. Um, he's the legend, man. If you get a winery visit at DRC, it's like the holy grail, you know? So to spend time in a cellar with that man is like, for any sommelier or wine person anywhere in the world, it's, that's kind of the pinnacle. Something in the cosmos has to align, or you really got to know somebody to get a winery appointment there. They don't do winery appointments. 
I'd never been there. Most of my friends had not been there. And they're some of the foremost experts on Burgundy in the country. Voilà. We, we shall taste, uh, we shall open the bottle here, if you don't mind. Voilà. Okay. I think the mark of a legendary winery is it doesn't matter what vintage it is, it's going to be great. And certainly you can say that about DRC in off vintages, bad vintages. These wines trade for thousands of dollars. It, it, it's the real deal. You're, you're not going to find a better expression of Pinot Noir in the world. Well, this is a, it's a bottle of uh, Echezo 2004. And 04 is one of these vintages where uh, things were difficult during the season, but we had a very good, beautiful end of season with uh, north wind, sun, uh, clear, clear skies. And it's a vintage I, I personally like very much. You have this... Uh, special texture, this uh, special way to touch your palate that a wine of a difficult year uh, has. A texture that is a little more uh, sharp, a little more uh, uh, acid. This uh, bouquet of, uh, of a forest, you know, for a humid forest, you don't have yet the uh, rose petal. But I know it will come in, uh, in what, 10, 20 years, and it will make a delicious wine. Uh, you know what? I think what uh, many people don't understand is that uh, uh, wine is uh, made uh, to drink and to, uh, if you are thirsty, to, uh, to, to, to quench your thirst. Many people think uh, of wine only as, a, as an object of culture. And it is an, an object of culture, but it is, it is also food. I mean, it's food, it's, a, it's an element. And uh, uh, it's important to take it that way too.